1945, a thousand Allied bombers attacked Berlin. Their objective, the heart of the city that had been the center of Hitler's empire. In 51 minutes, Berlin was razed to the ground. All that remained of one of Europe's most beautiful cities was a pile of rubble. 4,000 people died and half a million were left homeless. With more than 2,500 attacks on the principal cities, the Allies wanted to bring the people of Germany to despair. Their aim was to bring about as quickly as possible the end of the most terrible war of all time. Outside, please. They have been parked out there for several days. They are taking turns every four hours. They must be from the FBI. Maybe they are here because of you. Tell me, Helen, what have you done? Such a comedian. You should talk to your friend in Congress, though. Please, could you turn the volume down? This music makes me homesick. Me too. It reminds me of Berlin. That's why I like to listen to it very loud. Don't worry about the FBI. Right out in front of the car, I, I couldn't see it. Mileva. 
You mean me? Professor, Professor, don't move. I'll call an ambulance. Uh, if you need one, yeah, be my guest. Help me out. there. Don't move, Professor. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah. You came to America. Oh, good morning, Professor. How was your dance last night? Oh, my feet are killing me. <laughs> the usual. Do you want a chocolate milkshake? <laughs> yes, why not? Two chocolate milkshakes. Coming right up. Thank you, Claire. I love looking at the water. What's so funny? Your timing. You always show up in the most unthinkable moments. Today you're lucky. Weber isn't here yet. I know he's talking with a girl in his office. Weber? With a woman? It's not what you think. <laughs> What's a girl doing in the Polytechnic? Allow me to present your new classmate. This is Miss Mileva Maric. My name is Marcel Grossman, and I would like to welcome you to our class. Kurt Kluger? Where are you from? Serbia. Ah. Land of throat cutters, and women as dangerous as the men. Idiot. Einstein, as usual. I apologize to Miss Maric. That's not necessary, Professor. Nothing happened. Nothing at all. Just impossible to believe, you know? You know what I mean? What do you want? I would like to apologize. Don't worry, it belongs to the past. Please stop. No, what? These are my math notes. You'll need them if you want to catch up. And pray, why such kindness? Consider it a bribe for your forgiveness. Einstein, to Professor Weber. Professor Weber? Einstein, have you perhaps been retarded as a child? <laughs> well, you still are, and you always will be. <laughs> You'll have to talk to my mother about that, uh, dear Weber. Oh. Her professor. <laughs> She's no joke, my mother. Oh, Miss Marich. Hello. Don't, Hello. don't worry. Thank you. Others. Miss Marich, would you like a beer? Oh, mm -hmm. Good. Come. I hope you don't mind. I, I, I corrected a couple of errors. It's good. Thank you. Have you eaten yet? Yes. So how can I repay you? Do you mind if we leave? Not at all. Goodbye then. Bye. Bye bye. You're working on something important, aren't you? What makes you think that? That. People usually leave work at home when they go out to have fun. Good day, Good day. Ideas are rare. If you lose one, you might never find it again. Have you shown this to Weber? Are you kidding? He will kick me out of the Institute. Is it that groundbreaking? Do you know what light is? A wave that travels through the ether. 
right? There's no ether in space. What are you saying? It's just a theory. But I'm sure about it. Space curves. How can it curve? Under the weight of light. Light is matter. Wait. Come. Come. Sit on my stomach. What are you waiting for? Come. See? Under your weight, my stomach is crushed and forms a curve. And the same thing happens with the universe. For every weight, there is a curve. Space is made up of curves. This theory is very original. No professor is going to accept it. You'll have to prove it. I know, I do know that. But if you do prove it, it's a revolution. A real revolution. Do I have to tell you? No men in my house. But Fräulein Herzog, we were just playing. <laughs> Elizabeth, go back to your room. And all of you, get out of here immediately. Oh, what a stench. What a stench. Let's have some fresh air. See you later. <laughs> See you later. Don't worry. I'm so sorry. Bye. I'm sorry. Come out of there. Out of this house. I can't go. Why not? I can't abandon my sausages. <laughs> and who are you? Albert Einstein, at your service. Eat your sausages, then go home. Thank you. room? You're right, sir. I apologize. You do know that I could kick you out, don't you? This is wrong. But I'm not done yet. <clears throat> That's wrong, too. That's how I understood it. You two again. If you don't stop, you will have to leave. I thought I was the genius. We'll continue later. Thank <laughs> you. 
I think we're late. Oh, God, he's so heavy. He's got 50 notebooks in here. I wonder what he needs them for. He wants to bury Newton. He takes out the paper. <laughs> but if my bike breaks down, Einstein's pain. Don't be so sure. <laughs> here we are. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Late as usual. Did you take a shortcut? No. What took you so long? We have a lot of things. You take that parcel. Oh, oh. Whoa, there. Oh. My papers. Careful. It's what not that interesting. What are all those equations? They don't make sense. Just recipes. We got them all. Oh. You must be Mileva. Yes, that's me. Al Albert just left. Leave my son alone. Why should I? We love each other. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. One look at you and it's clear that between you and my son, a serious relationship would be impossible. Maybe you should talk to Albert then. Hmm. It would be useless. In certain matters, he's still extremely immature. To get him to live in such a time, you must have concocted quite a stratagem. That's enough. That's the last rule. How dare you insult me in my own home? Leave this house immediately. Leave! Don't keep your hopes high. Albert will never marry you. You can find Frau Einstein in the tea room. Thank you. You remember? <laughs> oh, Albert. When will you stop meddling in my affairs? Your mother. I have every right to know who you associate with. No. Who I associate with is my own business. Not as long as your father supports you. There are rules you have to follow. Rules? What rules are you talking about? Don't be so sanctimonious. Oh, you're so naive. Did you take a good look at your Mileva? Don't you dare talk about Mileva. That poor, poor girl. If you had half the brain she has, you'd apologize. You're ridiculous. I'll tell you. Excuse me. Hello, Father. Albert, where are you going? Mother came to my house uninvited. Well, you know your mother. She wanted to see where you're living with the new girl. But that's none of her business. She told me you're living in a rundown place. She showed up at the bad moment, but she has no right to insult Mileva like she did. Albert, your mother's just a little too protective. She told me your young lady isn't uh, very interesting. You can tell me, what do you see in her? What do I see in her? Yeah. She's wonderful, intelligent. Shh. And when we work together, my ideas come to life. And we love each other. I, I think a vacation would do you good. Albert, the fresh air of the Italian Alps will do you a world of good. And don't tell me you can't come. Your mother wouldn't hear of it. Come, come, let's sit down and we'll talk about it. Please stop crying. What should I do? Laugh? It's 
only for a couple of days. You really don't understand. First you tell me your mother's a witch. Then you go and spend the holidays with her. But what else am I supposed to do? Do you want me to kill her? She's my... I know she's your mother. You've said it over and over again. Go on. Run to mommy. Be a good little boy. You're being unfair. What about you? What you're doing is fair? I mean nothing to you. Don't be silly. You know you are the woman I've chosen to spend my life with. Hmm? I'll never let anybody get between us and our dreams. Promises are meant to be kept. You know that, don't you? If you love me like you say you do, you'll have to trust me. Give me a seat for a second. Thank you. I don't want to talk to you. I know my mother can say very nasty, unkind and cruel things. But if you leave, you're letting her win. Is that what you want? All right, I'm not going with her. I'm staying with you. But don't you ever leave me again. I have no life without you. But I don't want to ever see her again. I promise. Let's go home. I'm taking you at your word. You can upload now if you want. Alden! Be careful, Kruger. If it falls, it may blow up. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's what Alder says. That's right. Alcohol is matter. It's made up of water and hydrogen, so it's potential energy. Herr Einstein, have you replaced me as a teacher? <laughs> I wouldn't dare her, Professor. Herr Einstein believes that matter is energy. And energy is matter. That's foolishness. One day I'll be able to prove it. His theory is fascinating. If mm. you just read his notes. Really? I thought you were interested in more private matters. And pray, what is this fascinating intuition about? I'm not ready. We are still working on it. We? Miss Marich and I. Ah. <laughs> I had no idea. Scientific revolutions took place under the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> There's always an apple involved. And Eve was the first one to bite into it. Right? You Jews always have to mention the Bible. You do better to concentrate on your exams. And you, young lady, don't let him subjugate you. And don't underestimate my advice. Marcel Grossman, nine out of ten.
Jakob Erat. Nine out of ten. Congratulations. Where have you been? I'll tell oh. you later. Albert Einstein. Seven out of ten. You deserve mania cum laude. And the best for last, Kurt Kluge, who has received the highest grades, Mania Cum Laude. <laughs> He didn't call my name. They flunked me. Thank you. Mileva. Go away. I don't want anybody's pity. Pity? He went after you because he couldn't get to me. Don't let the bastard win. Easier said than done. My parents invested all they had in me, and this is how I thank them. I failed so many times, they should give me the failing prize. I'll help you. We'll study together. You'll get through next year. I, I was dreaming of this day for so long. I, I wanted to celebrate our graduation and... And what else? Albert, I'm pregnant. See anything. Yes, come in. Uh, you could have saved yourself a trip. I already filled the position. Can I ask you who got the job? Your friend, Kluge. Kluge is very competent. But you know I was right for the job. No, oh, yes, I agree. That the post was right for you, but I didn't give it to you because I don't think you are qualified for a teaching position. What's so funny? You're lying. You didn't give me the job because you are anti-Semitic. And you are a prick. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> Congratulations, Kluge. Thank you. You could have told me you also wanted the job, though. Wait, others, wait. Weber insisted. And anyway, he would have given the job to anyone except you. You, you know that, don't you? Yes, I do. But as a friend, you could have at least warned me. Tell him this time. I'm such a good actor. He was touched, but not enough for cold cuts. <laughs> so, this is with speck, <laughs> and this is with fresh cheese. Which do you want? Speck. Good. Thank you. Why not they bring in the wood? Never. But we have animal heat. <laughs> and the little one is nice and cozy. Maybe the packer wants his part back. <laughs> If you don't go to open the door, we'll never find out. Cold. What are you doing here? 
What do you mean? Can I come in? Why should you? Don't be an ass and get out of my way. Good morning. Where are you going? It's too cold. Now, are you going to tell me what you want? Your father and I are worried. You haven't answered any other letters. My mother and my sister will help me. What about me? Am I that useless? I need you to stay here. But promise me you'll get paid for your lessons. And you'll eat. We should go now. The train leaves in half an hour. to overcome the pain is to share it with you. God has taken away our right to be parents. Our little Liesel has left us. Are you all right? Is anything wrong? Have any experience in the field? Absolutely none. You must know how to file a patent. Absolutely not. Any legal background? Absolutely none. Listen, you have many good reasons not to hire me. I wouldn't hire me. <laughs> Are 3,500 francs a year enough? I'm not sure you are making a good deal, but I most certainly am. It is, but we can't afford cake. Even if uh, someone else paid for it? Ah, of course, man. I should have known you were behind this. Marcel, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know Elizabeth. Look! Grossman, what is the cake? <laughs> Oh, 
Thanks for coming. I wouldn't have missed it for anything in the world. How was your vacation? Good. I you bumped into your parents? How are they? Just fine. What's this? Your father asked me to give it to you. Thank you, father. <laughs> This is for my wife, Mileta. Just imagine being on a spaceship and traveling from one star to another. From every different star, depending on how far from Earth, we would see different ages on Earth. So based on your theory, if we were on Vega, which is 50 light years away, we could see my grandmother, who I never met. Of course. <laughs> and she would be right. Waving right back to you. I know this might sound crazy, but I'm sure that one day we will no longer be obsessed with time. What if we were on that star over there? We would see Mozart at his harpsichord. And what if we were on the moon, which is closer? We would see two idiots who lost their keys. <laughs> and instead of making love, they are dreaming. What if we rode the light? It would go so fast. If we rode the light, there would no longer be space and time. And we would be immortal. We were so young, we could do anything. Even talk nonsense. We used to talk and talk. And then we would go to work. And you were so good at mathematical calculations. That night, there was so much certainty in your words, you could have convinced anyone. I never told you this, but I often rode that spaceship. It was my way of escaping in my dreams. That's enough. You're always wasting your time with those experiments. May I remind you that I hired you to catalogue inventions. But this also should be catalogued. What's it for? It's to measure some of the properties of light. <laughs> Do you know that light travels 300,000 kilometers per second? Do you realize what it would be like to travel at that speed? Why would anyone want to go so fast? The flow of time would stop and we would become immortal. During working hours, please forget about immortality. What I really want to know is whether this can be a pressure cooker that whistles. So women can cook beans while ironing. This is a truly worthwhile invention, Herr Director. Yes, it is. And with the royalties, we'll be able to pay our salaries, yours included. All right, if it works, I give you a whistle. Mm.
Get this cat out of here. Where is he? Helmut. I don't want this now. Albert, what's going on? Stop this. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, look at this. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'll look at it. Anything else? No, thank you. No, thank you. What were you saying? That the theory that was going to revolutionize science came to light there, in front of our eyes. After that, you slept for days and days. Remember? I didn't just sleep. We also celebrated our victory. What was it you were saying? If a child is born in India at midnight, for us... For us, the child will be born seven hours later. But is the child born or not? I mean, if it's born now. <sighs> Which now? Our now, here in Switzerland. He's not born. In our now. Actually, he could already be dead. Right. Right. Time is relative to the person living it, of course. Albert, I'm afraid they will not understand your theory. Yes, they will. <laughs> Men and women of Switzerland! We have destroyed your time. Your precious clocks are useless now. Your obsession with precision is obsolete. Finished. Stop. Good. Come in. Which way? This way. Uh. What are you doing here? Uh, you studied all those years to end up in a dump like this. I love this dump. Uh. And it helps pay the rent. Hooray! Whistle! It's not my invention. I just have to verify that. This place is worthy of someone with a diploma from the Polytechnic. Father, why are you here? May I have a seat? Of course. It's such a surprise to see you here. Is there something you have to tell me? Albert, 
I'm sick. The doctors tell me I only have three months left to live. Three months? Yeah. What's wrong? That's by the no? Miss Marriage. What's wrong? Miss Marriage. Over there. Miss Marriage. What happened? Nothing serious. You simply fainted. Are you feeling better? Yes. Friend Professor Kluger took them. No. Someone could have taken them. I was going to give them back to you. Before or after you copied them? No, it's not what you think. I was just comparing my notes with Arbus, really. You disgust me. He took advantage of my state to steal his work. <laughs> You're crazy. Right? And don't you dare use any of that. Otherwise, I'll make sure you live to regret it. Three hours? Oh, that's too long. Mother, please stop it. The baby will come when it comes. But I know this doctor. We could ask him to... It's a boy? Yes. Oh, I'll take him. I'm the grandmother. How is my wife? She's doing fine. Let me hold him. Yes, but be very, very careful. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. to celebrate our dear friend Albert Einstein, the man who's turning the universe upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Now on, we will no longer know the time nor the place we are in. <laughs> I think you should say something. Well, what can I say? It seems that because of me, you're all lost in the universe. <laughs> but don't panic. At least one thing is certain, 
Without Mileva's help, my work would not exist. Thank you, Dolly. <laughs> to Mileva! <laughs> And uh, to the birth of a new physics. Oh, come on, Marcel. <laughs> new physics, come on. You've had too much wine. Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, Albert's theories are pure fantasy. Either you didn't get it, or you're jealous. Which is it? No, no, no. Perhaps Kluger has a point. Imagination is the mother of invention. Words, words. <laughs> Just words. Words, so many words. Nice words for philosophers, for, for poets, but not for scientists. They will never take you seriously. Well, maybe you're right, but I still believe in this. To you, to you, and to you all. Thus it follows from my special theory of relativity that mass and energy are different manifestations of the same thing. This C here is a constant that refers to the velocity of light. It shows us how to interconnect these two forms of energy. <laughs> That's absurd! <laughs> Matter and energy are two distinct concepts. This equation shows that very small amount of mass may be converted to a very large amount of energy and vice versa. Oh. <laughs> now, uh, may I ask just what kind of experiments were used to prove this theory of yours? For the moment, none. Oh. <laughs> but logical thinking has brought me to these conclusions. Someone one day will be able to prove it. Can you tell us? The history of physics is filled with preposterous theories which cannot be proven. Please come back and explain your little theory when you have a little proof. <laughs> we would also need something to back up your other idea about the relativity of time and space. Is that it? Or do you think that your time is different than mine? The passage of time is affected by the person who's measuring it. If you sat on a hot stove for a second, it would feel like an hour. But if you hug the girl for an hour, it would seem like a second. <laughs> Usual. Your reply is a joke. My theory is fully published, Professor. Please read it. <laughs> for which institute do you work? For the patent office, why? <laughs> now I, I understand. The haven of uh, improvised inventors. And so you thought it was a good idea to reinvent the universe. <laughs> My theory is valid, Herr Professor. And it's beautiful. Like every invention of the creator. Gentlemen, we are wasting our time. Sorry I was late with the cake. Apologize to your son. I will, but I have to go now. Here are the electrodynamic calculations you asked me to do. Hmm? Oh, you didn't have to bother. I was going in the wrong direction. When did you realize that? About a week ago. 
And you made me work for a week for nothing? I didn't have time. What about me? I just forgot. With the conference and everything else, I just can't spend my life buried in a patent office. Who's asking you to? Look, Mileva, you just have to be a little more patient and soon everything will be back to normal. Albert, wait. I think Hans is going to have a baby brother or sister. What's wrong? You look as if it's bad news. No, it's just that I... I don't know if it's the right moment to have another child. Mileva. From that moment on, everything changed. We started to live in fear. Me of losing you, you were facing life. A new child meant that our plans had to be rearranged. You mean your plans? I wasn't in the picture anymore. Stop! If I catch you, you're in trouble! That's it. Stop fighting, the two of you. When your brother tells you to stop, you stop. You're sweating. Don't tell, Mother. I won't. Albert? Elsa. <laughs> this is Madame Brigitte. Hello? You look very well. Thank you. What are you doing here in Zurich? I needed a change of air. All they talk about in Berlin is the war. Mm. What about you? I'm at war here with my children. Hans Albert. And Edward. Edward. Hello. My name is Elsa. <laughs> Come say hello to Elsa. She's your cousin. Good morning, madam. <laughs> Edward. What beautiful boys. Thank you. How long are you staying? As long as you want to, Mr. What was that? That's very rude. So, Doctor, the child is healthy and responds to stimuli. His emotional world is very powerful. He's reactive. He's like a crystal glass, beautiful but extremely fragile. So what can we do? Are you asking me as a doctor or as a parent? I love my son. Well, he doesn't know it. And he's waiting for you to show him you do. What are you doing here? You should be in bed now. I had a bad dream. Come here. Tell me your dream and we make it go away. I can't. It's too bad. Don't be afraid. I'm here now. Why do you and Mummy always fight? That's what grown-ups do sometimes. Uh, do you love mommy? Of course. And I love you and your brother. Is that why you have bad dreams, hmm? Don't worry about these things. But I'm scared. I'm scared of what? Of the dark. Ah, oh, here. Oh. Oh. 
Do you know why it's dark at night and light during the day? Because there's the sun during the day. Good. And how does the light get to us? I don't know. The sun is a big cannon shooting billions of fireflies. And that's the light. At night, the fireflies sleep. And that's why it's dark. Hmm? Would you like to go back to bed now? Mm. You're not going to leave me, are you? I'm not going to leave you, Edward. Let's go off to sleep now. Are you ready to go? No, I'm ready for you. I've been waiting for this moment for so long. I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> and Milena, what did you tell her? I don't need to make up any excuses. Can you find your way over here? Or do you need a map? Mm. You like Good. it? Of course. It's Burger Caviar. Isn't it a bit dark in here? Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the ritual they used to do when I was a child. I well, know you're a big boy. <laughs> yes? Excuse me, there are two gentlemen who would like to see you. Did they say who they were? Planck and Nurse from Berlin. Are you sure? Isn't it enough I tell you their names? The two famous professors from Berlin? Should I invite them in? Absolutely not. Where are they now? They are waiting in the hallway. I'm coming, I'm coming. Good morning, Professor Einstein. Good morning. I'm Max Planck, and my colleague, Professor Nest. Good morning. It's an honor to meet you. We feel the same. But let's get straight to the point. We are here to offer you... Thank you. To offer you the post of director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Physics and the professorship chair and the professorship chair at Berlin University, with no teaching obligations, which means you'll have plenty of time for your own research. What have I done to deserve all this? <laughs> Please, Professor, let's not be modest. We've been following your work for quite a while now. It's time for you to reap the fruits. Thank you. It's an extremely interesting offer, but I need some time to think it over. What doesn't convince you? What are they performing at the Berlin Opera this year? Uh, actually, I don't know. How about the fruits I will reap? You will receive a yearly salary of 12,000 marks. And uh, how much time do I have to decide? We were hoping for your immediate answer. Um, I understand 
you are in a rush. But if you stay in town two more days, I'll see you off at the train station. If I'm carrying a red rose, it means I have accepted. As you wish, Professor. We just have to hope the rose won't be white. You never told me that story before. I was in Paris to tell you I gambled. Don't tell me you did it for the money. A little. But I renounced my German citizenship when I was 14. So going back to Berlin meant going back to a crime scene. But your narcissism won. I remember asking you to come along. I did come. Even if I couldn't see myself playing the lady and mingling in Berlin's high society. Anyway, we were no longer the two poor but happy people we used to be. Yes. We were adults and I needed the world to recognize me and take me seriously as a scientist. Berlin was the best place for me. Berlin or your cousin Elsa's bed? Mother, do we have to stay here? Yes, sweetheart, we do. This apartment is a bit sad. My assistant found it already furnished, but if you don't like it, we can change the furniture, or we can look for another one. Berlin is a big city. What's all that? Invitations. There is even one from your dear cousin Elsa. She didn't waste any time. You'll be going by yourself. But we are both invited. Don't worry. Nobody's going to miss me. What are you playing with? Everything is so dusty. Put it down. Let's go and wash our hands. not to fumigate me. Besides, smoking is bad for you. What else do you propose? You should have a healthier way of life. What are you trying to say? You could spend more time with me. Everything in its own time. <laughs> what time? If you give this up, you won't have much time. Listen, when my time is up, it's up. And until then, I want to smoke, drink, eat, sleep well, and possibly not alone. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. We both know who he's with and I'm going to bring him home. Don't be silly. Everything is all right. Go back to bed. Hans. What are you doing? I'm going to get him. Take off that coat. No! You're not going anywhere. Yes, I am. Leave it. No! Stop it. No! Stop it, Hans. Shh. Shh. Edward, come here. Come here, calm down. Calm down, Edward. My naughty bear. Eh? Calm down. 
little bears are asleep by now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we must be careful not to wake up the German neighbors. <laughs> Let us all go to sleep. Come on. His lines. <laughs> 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 oh, hello. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Um, it's going all right. How are things going for your family? Well, I have my last one. That's fascinating, I must say. Quite That's the woman I've seen. Uh, 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 <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Next month. Frau Einstein. What do you think of Berlin? Well, I'm trying to get used to it. You'll come to like it. Thank you. Someone who would like to say hello. <laughs> hello, Albert. Hello. Oh, thank you. Um, so now that you're in Berlin, we can see each other. I also work here. I thought you were still in Switzerland, in Zurich. Never. No, I've been in Berlin for the last two years. We've mentioned it in the papers. I apologize, but I forgot to read the gossip pages. Please excuse me. Professor, please. Not now, please. Have you seen me later? She must have left. Perhaps she was on film. <laughs> it was clear it was over. Elsa spent the whole evening snickering at me. I felt ugly and out of place. The only way to avoid being hurt was to go back to Switzerland. saying a word. You wouldn't have heard me. Leave me alone, Albert. Don't touch me. Go back to your party. I don't want to see your face anymore. That's it. Let's go. Wait. Let's say your goodbyes here. It's better. No, 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 no. You need help with all the bags. I'll take you to the train. We'll find the porter. You don't need to bother. So. Behave. Listen to your mother. And I'll come visit as soon as I can. Read this. It's okay if you didn't answer it. Did you also write to me? No. You don't want to reconsider? I don't like to gamble. Wait. Mother, we have to go.
I often ask myself if you are really my father, because you never behaved like one. Your selfishness brought us to a city that never accepted us. Mother has suffered, and I will never forgive you for this. All I'm asking is that you leave us alone. So, I would like to end my intervention by saying that we must support our army that is fighting heroically on many fronts, from Belgium to France. Gentlemen, the foreign press is accusing Germany of barbaric actions. But how can we believe the accusation that our soldiers are burning libraries? Ours is the country of Kant, of Goethe. Yes. Yes. It is the most cultured yes. country in the world. They are writing that we have used nerve gas. They even dare accuse Professor Haber of having contributed to the development of this weapon. But it's true. Everybody knows about Professor Haber's studies on mustard gas. Professor Haber, we are talking about gas. Your nerve gas. A man of his stature Colleagues, please, please. The only way to show our support for our soldiers is to support them unconditionally. That's it. Don't count on me, Professor. I would like to remind everybody, everybody, that we are all scientists, not war criminals. How dare you! <laughs> Shame on you, Einstein. Shame on you. You are scheming against your own country. You are promoting defeatist propaganda. You are wrong. I hate all wars. Don't you know that the country benefits from war? Yeah. Why don't you tell that to those who are taking the bullets? That are breathing the nerve gas. The image is still impressed in my mind. It summed up the defeat. It was the end of an era. Be honest. The war was a great excuse for you. I remember when you came to Zurich. You probably forgot. I never did.
hands. What are you doing here? This is our house. No. Mm. No. Hello. I made a bet with the boys that we're never going to see you again. Yes, I lost. You could have at least let me know you were coming. If I had, would the reception have been less hostile? What were you expecting? A marching band? No, but there's something in between a marching band and hate. Our sons don't know the middle way. And I'm sick and tired of smiling for you. When are you leaving again? Tomorrow. So well, it's because of you. Now that the war is over, are we going to live together again like a family? That's still not possible. Germany is on the verge of a civil war. You're safer here. You and your excuses. Why don't you tell us the truth that you don't want us around? That's enough. Don't you dare talk to your father like that. Take your brother and go to your room. Now, immediately. Do as your father says. Now that we're alone, would you tell me why you're here? I came to ask you for a divorce. Well, you used to surprise me, but this is... I think it's better, Mileva. For who? For you? For your lover? Professor Weber was right. You only care about yourself. Weber? Let me know what the boys and you need, and I'll send you money. What hurt me the most was not your selfishness. I wasn't jealous of Elsa. What hurt me was that I had to step off our traveling spaceship, which was my whole life. The dream had taken up so much of our energy. I understand. It's late, I'm sure you're tired. Like, there is still so much to discuss. I have to talk to you about Edward. You have to promise me you'll take care of him. I'm not sure I know how. I can't leave until I'm certain Edward will be taken care of. Albert, I've reached the end of my life. I'm dying. <laughs> 